Hello, I'm Dustin Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at testing. So, why do we need rigorous testing? Well, without rigorous testing, the program might fail and crash, resulting in serious consequences for the user and developer. So, say, a bank system, and it uses a program for the transactions. What if that program crashes? What's going to happen with those transactions? What's going to happen with that money? You see, a big problem. Or, say, for like a, a critical system, like a, a nuclear power plant. If a program for that fails, it's going to be a catastrophe. So, the program must cope with invalid data in a sensible way. It must be robust. And robust means the ability to cope with errors during execution, so runtime errors, and cope with erroneous input. Erroneous input is uh, input that is not sensible at all and is completely ab abnormal. And if the software does not work as intended, the developer does not get paid. And that's not good. You want to get paid, so make sure your thing works properly. Application testing. So the type of testing we're talking about is application testing, testing the software. And it's not just error detection, but it's using the software under controlled conditions to see how well it works, and verifies whether or not the software meets the user requirement in the specification criteria, which was decided at the beginning of the software development lifecycle. So test plans and test strategies. What's the difference between them? A test plan is basically what you're going to test the details of that test and what conditions you're going to do the test under. And a test plan looks like this. So you've got the test number, test data, test purpose, expect the result, and the actual result is done when you actually do the testing. This is just a test plan. You also get um, test strategy, which, uh, which is a detailed account of the testing approach and testing standards, how you're going to approach the testing and the standards that you need to do the testing at, which looks like this. So it's a very detailed document. Now, types of test data. We have valid data, which is data that would normally be entered and accepted. And valid data is data that would not normally be accepted. And extreme data is data that is at the limit, the boundaries of what the program can, is, is able to accept. Erroneous data, like I said, is abnormal, unsensible data that completely breaks the rules of what can be accepted. And a good example to use so you can understand this is for a range check. So here we have a test plan. And this test plan is to check that the user can only enter numbers between 1 and 10. So the range is 1 to 10. Here we have a valid data. It's within the acceptable range. It's accepted. Here we have extreme data within the boundaries, the limits of the range. So 1 and 10, which is also accepted. And here we have invalid data. So outside of the boundaries, what would not normally be accepted. So like 0 or 11, in which case an error message could pop up. And that's a good way to... Um, to make sure your program is robust and does not crash. So by preventing the program from trying to accept the data, which it will not be able to, so it will crash, instead you can make sure that the user is not allowed to enter invalid data and the program is not allowed to um, try to accept it by um, putting an error message. So that stops the program from accepting that data so that the user can change it so the program does not crash. So that's a good way to um, make your program robust. Now here we have erroneous data, like LOL. It's asking for a number between 1 and 10, and the user enters a stupid thing, a, a string, a character value, a text. And obviously, it's not accepted. Now, acceptance testing. Acceptance testing is checking if the software fully meets the user requirements and specific criteria. And the specific criteria, it must be well-defined, and it's a criteria that is agreed between the user and developer at the beginning of the software development night cycle. And the criteria test methods are also agreed be between the developer and the user, as well as the actual test to be done. And if the user agrees and says that the program is fine, he accepts it, then the developer can get paid. So unit or modular testing. Small parts of a program are individually and, and independently tested, and these are called units or modules. And it's often automated, done by a computer, but it can be done manually. And it is a detailed approach by means of continuous testing and revision. And however, it cannot verify the functionality of the software as a whole. So it does not show how the program works together. It does not show how cohesive the program is. It just shows that the building blocks of the program can work independently of each other. So you've got individual units and modules of the program tested individually and independently. Now we have integration testing which is when all the separate units have been coded and tested, then, then they need to be integrated into one system. Sorry, that needs to be a Y there. And each unit 
should have been designed to work together, but obviously programmers may have made assumptions about how their unit works with other parts of the program. So in unit testing, you usually have different development teams or different programmers working on each unit. That's why you need to integrate, uh, that, that's why you need to have integration testing, to see if those units work together as a whole. So test how well the program works as a whole. So each individual unit is tested to see how well it works together. Alpha testing. It's done in-house, so in, in the company, by other developers of that company. But it uses a limited selection of hardware and data, so the, limited by the hardware and data of the company, and can be done at various stages in the development and, and on specific modules. And it's usually referred to as internal acceptance testing. It's a part of internal acceptance testing. Okay. Now we have beta testing. Beta testing is done on almost complete software, unlike alpha testing, which is done in various stages of development. And beta testing is given to a sample of potential customers who are independent of development team, so not part of that company. And this allows the software to be exposed to real-world data and can be tested on many different hardware platforms. So it's better testing. And this is referred to, or beta testing is referred to as part of, external acceptance testing. Now we also have some other tests, like load test and performance tests, which are really just subtests, and they could be part of integration testing or another type of testing called non-functional testing. But let's look at these now. A load test checks how the software works during increasing system loads. So, for example, many users are using the software simultaneously, so it checks how well it copes under that. Performance testing checks how quickly the program responds, so its response time and its processing speed for specific scenarios, like if you have a, a huge load, like this example from before, many users using the software simultaneously. That's all you need to know for testing. Now in your exam, it will, it's very common for the exam board to ask you to compare different types of testing or ask you how you can test um, a specific program or something like that. So this has been the awesome tutor. Bye.